In this tutorial video I'll be showing you how to use Clonezilla to do a full disk backup. Now Clonezilla can be used on any operating system, be it whether Windows, Mac or Linux. Very flexible little application and my favourite tool for doing backups. So I'll be showing you it in a virtual box just to get a decent recording of it. You need to download the ISO file from the website and either burn it to a CD or write it to a USB memory stick using UNET Bootin. So if you put that in your machine, restart it and boot off well either that CD or USB from the BIOS, you'll get to this screen, so I'll just press enter. And that boots into Clonezilla. If you're not familiar with Linux, Clonezilla is a bit daunting to use. It's very basic and well, very reminiscent of computers oh, 20 years ago, I would say. You choose your language off this screen. The next stage I'm choosing a key map for the keyboard. Leave it blank, don't touch it. Hey, let's keep things simple here. Then press enter again, so start Clonezilla. And to do a full disk backup, choose the first option, which is to device to image. If you wanted to do a disk copy, so that'd be device to device, and I've done a different tutorial on that one. So, so far I've just pressed enter a few times, nothing complicated at this stage, so you don't need to remember the options, you just need to hit enter a few times in a row. Hey, easy. Before cloning you have to assign where a Clonezilla image will be saved to or read from. We will mount that device or remote resources as home partition image. This tutorial I shall be using a local device, so that is local device, exam for example hard drive or USB drive. So press enter. Now if you want to use a USB device, please insert the device into the machine now and wait about 5 seconds and then press enter, so the OS can detect the USB device. So if you want to do that, then press enter to continue. Now we need to mount a device as home partition image. Oh, I bet it's sounding really complicated so far. Again, if you're not familiar with Linux, we do not call our drives C colon or D colon like Windows does. The first drive is referred to SDA, second drive is SDB. Then the number at the end of it is the partition number. If you had one drive split into two partitions, you would know them in Windows as C colon and D colon. In Linux, they would be SDA1 and SDA2. I hope that makes sense there. I'm using the second hard drive for this virtual box. Now using a second hard drive is my recommendation on how to do backups. If you're just backing up between partitions and the whole drive fails, you've lost your whole data. Like I would have done with that solid state disk that broke recently. But I didn't, I backed up to a different drive. Right, next question. Which directory do you want to back up to? I'm just choosing the top folder in the local drive. Press enter. You, now you could ignore this screen here, but I'll just explain there where it says dev slash sdb1 it's showing how much space I have on that drive so choose the mode to run in do you want to be a beginner or expert mode I'm going to go down the expert route now what sort of backup do you want to do do you want to save the whole disk do you want to save a single partition or do you want to exit and reboot in this tutorial I'm saving the whole disk so I'm going to choose the save disk option input a name for the saved image to use. That name is perfectly acceptable. Okay. Choose the disk you want to back up. Well that's easy, there's only one there. If you're choosing off a list of partitions then you can just scroll up and down the list and press space to highlight the partitions you would like to back up. Or actually that's even the same for hard drives if you've got multiple hard drives in your system. Press enter when you're done. Now this is a little bit complicated, what sort of backup program do you want to use? Right, if you're using Windows, I would choose the dash Q, the third option, NTFS clone, part image, DD. For Linux or Mac, I would choose the first option, part clone, part image, DD. Some advanced parameters. I don't really change anything much on here. Sometimes I take that one away so I don't get bugged with being asked too many times. I'll leave it on for the moment. Right, for Windows users, might be an idea to choose that option there. Remove Windows, swap and hibernation. Makes the backup a bit smaller. Press enter. 
Choose a compression option. <laughs> this is sounding very complicated. Look, it's not that bad. If you have multiple CPU cores in your system, choose the first one. I found it's actually very fast. If you've got a very old, slow system, I would go for the last option, no compression. As you can see there, it says fastest but largest image size. If you've got a reasonable speed single core system, you might just want to go for the second one there, dash to Z1. Your choice. I like the first option. Now it's asking about the image size, splitting into multiple volume files of X amount of bytes. You can leave it as is. 2,000, I sometimes go up to 20,000, yeah. depends what you're going to do with it, but you can leave it as is. Now choose if you want to check and repair the file system before saving it. The option only refers to certain file systems which are well supported by FS check. Actually not for NTFS or HFS, now that's Windows and Mac systems. So if you're a Linux user, you could choose to check and repair the file system, otherwise skip it. I always skip it. After the image is saved, do you want to check if the image is restorable? Note, this will only check if the image is restorable and it will not write any data to the hard drive. You could do, just for peace of mind. I don't, and they have always worked for me. That's the caveat, it has always worked for me. It may not always work for you, but it should. Right, don't worry about that command there. That's if you want to do it for bar the command line option. I've never done it that way. Right, press enter to continue. Now, Clonezilla is just reporting what it's going to do here. Yes, I'm happy with all of that. Do I want to continue? Yes or no? Yes, I do. And now it does the backup. Right, you can see the rate here is going about 2 gig a minute on my system. Doesn't help, I'm also recording, thus hammering data on the hard drive. The speed it can hit on a modern, powerful system is between 5 and 6 gig a minute. Now, that is pretty good going. And that speed could reduce as low as oh, about 500 meg for a laptop system, because laptops do tend to be very slow on processing power for doing backups. Right, that's confirmation that the backup has completed. If you don't get that far, it's failed. What would we like to do now? Just go and reboot. But now I'll show you how to restore the image. Choosing the image we're going to restore from. Second drive, that was what I chose. Top directory, yep. Any key to continue, yep. Once again, I'm going to go for the expert options. And this time I will be scrolling down to the restore disk. If you chose to back up the partitions, then you want to do restore partitions. Choose the image you want to restore. Well, that's easy. There's only one there. And choose the target disk to be overwritten. Again, that's easy. I only have one there. But otherwise, choose the disk from the list. I spoke about the drive letters with the differences between Linux and Windows earlier. So the first drive here would be C drive in Windows. I don't usually reinstall Grub. I used to find that broke, although I haven't tried it for some time, but I just don't do that anymore. Is there anything else we need to change here? Depending if you're backing up to a different size, drive, you might want to change that option there, try to resize file system to fit partition size. But I'm just going back up to the same drive, so that doesn't matter. So, you know, I can leave the rest of that there as is. Which partition table do you want to use? You could use a partition table from the image, do not create one, create a partition table proportionally, okay for master boot record format, not good partition table drives, or enter the command line and manually and do that later. The easiest one here is use the partition table from the image. If you need to resize it, you can do it later via the operating system that you're using. Or gparted, that works nicely. And that's it, now press enter to continue and it will restore the data. Again, we've got the report about what Clonezilla is going to do. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes, I do. Let me ask you again, do you want to continue? Double checking here. We did mean that, yes I did. And Clonezilla is now restoring the image. Now I found the progress rate can be slightly faster than the backing up the image originally. Well, it's finished restoring the backup, so let's see what's happened. So press enter to continue and I'll reboot. Well, it appears Ubuntu is booting up and has booted up. 
So that's worked beautifully. So that's how you do a backup and restore with Clamzilla. Thanks for watching. See you later.